Hey guys, it's Kev uh, with Mobile AC. Today, a customer called me up, said, hey, uh, my AC is not working, can you check it out? So I'm like, all right, cool, let's do it. Uh, so I'm working on a 17 Ford F350 with a gas 6.2. So once you push the AC button, you know, it commands it on, but it actually does not turn on the clutch assembly. So I'm like, okay, is this a refrigeration issue or is this an electrical issue? So I hooked up my gauges. I had 30, or uh, not 30, excuse me. I had uh, 100 something ish static pressure. I'm like, okay, so it's got juice in it. Why isn't it turning on? So I check fuses and I check relays. Obviously forward is ugly. They just put the numbers in there. They don't actually tell you um, what those represent. So I had to cross reference to the owner's manual. So once I did that, I went down to the coil on the compressor. And I said, hey, is this thing getting power? Is this thing uh, have the proper resistance? So, um, what I ended up doing is ohming out the coil. So what I got going on here is I've got both meters hooked up. So here is my new unit, here's my old unit. So currently the Mac meter is set onto the new unit at three ohms. Three to five ohms is your spec. And then here is the resistance for my old coil. So basically what's going on here is it is Sh nearly shorted so by the time that it gets it's 10 amps or whatever ish it is it's not enough to actually energize and create the magnetic field that is necessary to suck in the hub so uh, i struggled a little bit to get the uh, components off so if you look down underneath here i still have it on vehicle so i mean that was the way to go man i don't want to take out the refrigerant i don't want to pull the pump off and do this so i was able to squeeze it out on here so let me show you what i did so first step is i just use this bad boy right here uh, just buzzed off the nut that holds down the hub plate so this actually turns the compressor itself so once it's energized this plate is sucked to the face of this pulley and it uh, causes it to turn so that was easy buzz that right off uh, don't forget there's shims inside of here that set the gap between these two interchange or excuse me these two faces the hardest part of this job was honestly getting that snap ring out so this guy right here it's just really tight on the snout of the compressor so i was able to get these guys in there spread them out get it out that took a few extra minutes obviously belt came off so i had to use this setup to get the belt loose i left it on there i just got it off the pulley uh, then what I did is I got this little setup and I actually hooked it into this outer race right here, if you want to call it that, because I couldn't pull it off by hand. Usually these just slide right off. There's nothing really holding that on uh, besides the snap ring. So I had to hook that up. I'd use this little spacer guy. And what I did is I put a washer on this bolt and, and just snug this up by hand, just finger tight onto the snout of the compressor so it didn't damage the threads where these seat. Then I hooked this on there and I got this all set up and I used a 21 ratcheting wrench to crank this down to pull it off. So once I got that out, I was like, okay, I'm almost home. And then what you do, uh, you call this Ford engineer up and you slap him upside the head because he used Phillips screws to hold this coil on. Not the coolest thing in the world. Uh, luckily they came off. This is a 17, you know, it's not super old. It's got like 50,000 miles. I just used this setup. I put this in there. I hammered them all a couple of times, then I cranked them down with my handy little gear wrench driver, cranked them loose. So I'm gonna put this thing back together and we should be good to go. Part number for this, I bought on Rock Auto. It's all right here. MTCYB3207. If you're a Ford guy from 2012 to 2017 and your AC does not work, check this coil out. Peace.